To unlock the door, turn the key to the left and open. That way, the door stays locked and you won't have to relock it at the end of each day. Then flip on the light switches. To turn on the lights, you will flip the switches right when you walk in the door each day so that the lights can warm up. If you do not let the lights warm up, there will be a pink tint to your images. After you turn the computer on, Firefox and you will sign in and then you will go to focus. This is what it looks like when it opens up. When this little page pops down, you will click continue and later and it will disappear. To find your scans or the documents you're working on, click the scans folder and you will find the folder that you are currently working on. The only programs you'll be working on are Focus, Photoshop, and FileMaker. When using Focus, all of these settings are set. You do not need to adjust them if you do not feel like it, um, but feel free if you feel so inclined to change anything you can. This is what they are currently set at. You're going to leave the computer in landscape mode, or if you feel like you like this better in portrait mode, you can do that. I have just left it in landscape mode and the images pop up on the bottom, and it's easier to scroll through. Make sure that all of these boxes up here stay clicked and that they are dark gray. If they are not and they turn white, things will start disappearing on your screen. If this happens, Check to see if these are all dark and everything will be normal again. Before you begin taking photos, make sure that the overhead lights are turned off and that the front door is shut. When you come in each day, you will see that pages have already been cropped. If you want to start a new page, you're going to click on the empty space next to the last picture taken and your screen will black out. Then you will go over to the crop tool and click that and you'll see a crop appear. Open up the entire crop so you can see the whole white border. Then once you are ready to take a photo and you click capture, you will see the entire page show up. If you do not do this and you start taking pictures, it'll look like this. If you do not, if this happens, you can just go down to the crop, open up the page, click on the empty space, and you will see your full page again. Once you open up the crop, you're going to click on the zoom tool, and you'll get rid of the borders, and this is what has been captured. The only button you will use under the capture tab is the A, which is the focus button, and the positive sign as well. You're going to click the A every time you need to ad adjust or focus the page. And sometimes if you need to refocus something or you feel like it's not focusing quite well enough, click the plus sign and then go back to the A. If a book is not focusing, the camera will make a noise like that. Most of the time I just adjust the book um, so that the camera can, can focus on the words. When the camera is focusing correctly, you will hear a, a tiny little click. Sometimes you'll click the positive and go back to make sure it's clicked correctly. Click it a few times like this. Sometimes I'll bounce back to the plus and go back to the A to make sure it's um, fully focused. When you don't hear any more clicks, then you are focused and you will come over to the capture and you will hear the shutter go off and your page will pop up as the next page. You will take up to 10 to 30 images um, in one sitting if you choose. You can take as many as you want. Once you take all 10 images, you're going to go in and make sure each page is focused. When checking to see if a page is focused, click on the center of the image and wait for the dial to stop spinning. When it stops spinning, then you know it's done processing and you can see if it's focused or not. After you have checked all 10 or so of your images, you will come down and crop them. This will bring a border to your image and you can drag in the sides and crop to your 
Um, and if that happens, you can either Command Z, and it'll take you back to what you have, or just click on the page again. But you'll just crop it, and you'll want to keep each crop consistent throughout the whole book. It doesn't matter the thickness of the crop, as long as it is consistent the whole way through. This is where the Adjust tab comes into play. When using Focus, you will only use the Capture tab and the Adjust tab. And under the Adjust tab, all you'll be using is the Straightening tool. As you can see, the page is pretty uneven, so you're just going to be using the Straightening tool to strain out the page to the best of your ability. Some books are more crooked than others and are more slanted, so you will just decide which side you want to be straighter. But like I said, make sure you keep your cropping consistent. If you want a wider border, that's fine. Just make sure every page has roughly the same width of a border. You don't want one side really skinny, one side really wide, um, and you want every page in the whole series of the book to be consistent as well. Just know that crops are usually a little bit wider outside of the program. So you can crop something in here and it may look smaller, but when you pull it up in preview after you've exported it, it'll look larger. So this is really up to you and you decide how you would like the pages to be cropped. Just make sure the whole page is being seen and that you can see all of the words and the entire page of the book. When you are done cropping, you can go back down to the zoom tool. It'll flash what the page will look like when exporting. And you can decide if you need to adjust a crop on a certain side or if you think it looks good. And if it does, you can move on to the next page. When you are done cropping your pages and you are ready to export, you will see here that there is no check mark. This check mark right here indicates that this page has been exported. In order to export, you're going to right click on the mouse and this little screen will pop up and you will go to export. A new screen will pop down and you will send it to the designated folder. So you'll go to your scans folder, you will click the project it's under and the folder book you're, you're working on, say I was working on book 18, you're going to export them to the TIFF folder and then once you click on that, you're going to click export and send the book page there. And you can tell that it's being exported because it will wind up like this and then you'll have a check mark. And that check, marks, check mark means it's been exported. Even though this page has been exported, if you choose to change something or go back and make corrections, you can re-export it as many times as you want. Once you've sent it to the designated folder and you are about to export multiple images, you can right click and just export as previous and it'll export it to the same folder that you just sent the first one to and so that way you don't have to re-locate um, the page each time. If more than one person is working on books at the same time, whenever you start that day, just export the first page you left off on, um, send it to the designated folder just in case, and then from there on out you can export as previous. Notice an empty black page. To make things easier for everyone, if there's more than one person working on a book each day or every other day, take a blank photo and end the day with a blank page. That way the next person who comes in will know where you left off. It'll be easier for them to go back through and find where they left off um, on this black page or something like that. And this is the conclusion of the focus tutorial. If you have any other questions, you can talk to Darcy, and if she doesn't know, she can contact me.